The story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. Whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now, this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. The clump of gray white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Dr. Gillespie, I looked for symptoms of childhood predisposition right in the beginning of the case, and there weren't any, so forget it. No sign of it. But, Jimmy, are you sure you got a complete history of the patient? Of course I did. Look, it's a simple case of nutritional anemia. There's no question about the diagnosis or the why or the third degree. Oh, just checking, Jimmy, that's all. Mm. Been doing quite a lot of that lately. Hmm. Am I uh, starting to slip, Doctor? No, no, Jimmy, of course not. But I'm not doing so well at diagnosing my own cases, maybe. Well, nonsense. Of course you're doing well. Oh, perhaps I'm careless, not conscientious enough. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Well, then let's get to the real reason, shall we? Hmm? It's that overdeveloped curiosity of yours. Me? Curiosity? Mm hmm. You just can't bear to have anything happen around here that you're not in on. Kildare, I have never been so falsely accused in my entire professional career. Ah. I've always confined myself strictly to my own specific duty. Which apparently include the whole hospital and half of New York City. Just name one time. Go on. One lone, single, solitary time that, that I've ever butted into somebody else's business. Why, I could think. Oh, hello, Parker. Well, I'm back. Dr. Gillespie, Dr. Kildare. And I'll say one thing, I've never seen such a storm in my life. Why, I was nearly blown off my feet just getting out of the taxi. Parker, I... never mind the weather report. What's new over at the east side clinic? Look, at least let me get my hat off before you start the third degree. I've never seen anyone with as much curiosity as you've got. <laughs> Why, Dr. Kildare, did I say something funny? <laughs> no, but Dr. Gillespie just Parker, did. don't pay any attention to him. He has an abnormal <laughs> sense of humor. Oh, really? Well, I've never noticed any particular... I'll get it. <laughs> Kildare speaking. Jimmy, this is Bill Frazier at the Coast Guard Radio Base. Oh, Bill. Well, I haven't heard from you in months. How's everything? Fine. We'll probably get a chance to talk about it later. Look, Jimmy, we've got an emergency here that sounds like it's up your alley. What sort of an emergency? It's a young seaman, apparently in pretty bad shape. Needs medical attention. I see. And he's over there at the base. No, he's on a freighter, 280 miles out at sea. The ship's fighting heavy seas and may not make port for 48 to 60 hours. They left the ship's doctor in Le Havre. Thought maybe that you might be able to talk to the captain and tell him what to do. All right, Bill. I'll be over there in about 20 minutes. Where are we going, Jimmy? We? Oh, I don't see any need for you going out in this weather just to... No, uh... don't be an idiot. Parker, get my hat and coat. <laughs> CGRB4 calling MS Palermo. CGRB4 calling MS Palermo. Come in, Palermo. A little slow at answering, aren't they, Bill? Yeah, I guess they're having some kind of. MS Palermo standing by. Here we go. Go ahead, CGRB4. MS Palermo, regarding your request for medical assistance, we have Dr. Kildare here now in the transmitter room. Will you get the skipper? Roger. Stand by. I don't know what good we can do from here, but. Captain Douglas, MS Palermo in route to New York. W-K-O-A-M, speaking 70. Over. 
Dr. Kildare, Captain. What's the trouble? Over. Here's the picture, Doctor. This seaman is suffering from severe stomach cramps. His entire abdomen is swollen and very tender toward the right-hand side. He's running a fever and feels sick to his stomach. Over. It's appendicitis, Jimmy. There's not a doubt of it. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Captain Douglas, it sounds very much like acute appendicitis. Over. Yes, that's what we thought. Since we don't have a doctor on board, what's your advice? Over. How long has he been this way? About 12 hours. Now, how long before you'll reach port? Two days at least. It's rough going out here. Over. All right, Captain Douglas, just a moment. Stand by, Palermo. Roger. Dr. Gillespie, I doubt if there's even a slight chance he can hold out 48 hours without that appendix rupturing, even in an ice pack. No, no, no. He should be operated on right now, which, of course, is impossible. Mm. Bill, isn't there any other ship near the plan? Uh, oh, I mean, the one that does have a doctor aboard? No, Jim. It wouldn't do any good anyway. The wind's dropping out there now, but it's kicked up one of the worst ground swells in years. Now, it's out of the question to transfer a man from one ship to another. It makes you feel so completely helpless. You need a pair of hands that could save that man's life if they could only reach him. They can't. No, 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 unless you could find some way to send them by radio. And as far as I know... Wait a second. That may be it. What may be what? Radio. Ah, Jimmy, you're out of your mind. Uh, it's been done before. I wonder if there's anyone on board with some medical background, any experience at all. Yeah, I think your best bet's the radio operator. He was telling me earlier about being in the Navy medics during the war, but he's no doctor. Kildare, you can't perform an operation by radio. Without an operation, that man's going to die. Bill, let me talk to Captain Douglas again. Right. CGRB4 calling MS Palermo. CGRB4. Oh, come on in, Parker. Did you bring the book? Yes. Yes, here it is, Dr. Kildare. I hope I got here in time. Yes, plenty of time. Now, let's see. Grable's Elements of Surgery, Illustrated Edition, 1939. That's the book, isn't it? It's the same one they have on board, and this will give us something to work from. Bill, will you contact the Palermo, and we'll see how they're coming along with their preparations. Right, Jimmy. The book here now. I can start briefing that operator. What's his name, by the way? Steve Nelson. Oh, yeah. CGRB4, calling MS Palermo. CGRB4, calling MS Palermo. What's going on, Dr. Gillespie? Parker, you are looking at a one-time brilliant young doctor who, under the pressure of circumstance, has gone slightly mad. You don't mean that you finally... No, no, I don't mean that I anything. Parker, I think he's referring to me. CGRB4, calling MS Palermo. Come in, Palermo. Wrong, Bill. Well, we've lost contact for the moment. Reception's been pretty bad most of the day. Hmm. CGRB4 calling MS Palermo. Said Jimmy, have you thought what would happen if we lost contact in the middle of an operation? You know what would happen as well as I do. Only we won't. We can't. All right, Dr. Kildare. Page 291, illustration number three. I've got it now. Go ahead. Now, Steve, notice the spot on the abdomen that's labeled McBurney's Point there in the illustration. Now, that's where your incision will start. Do you see it? McBurney's Point. Okay, Doctor. All right. Now, the first layer of muscle runs obliquely across the abdomen. It's marked transversus abdominis. Transversus abdominis. Right. Make your incision about three inches long and parallel to the direction of the muscles. Fasten it open with the retractor clamps before you go on. Yes, sir. I understand. Now, the next muscle layer is called rectus abdominis. It runs vertically, so you'll make a vertical incision through it. A vertical incision? Yes, sir. The idea is to avoid cutting across the muscle fibers whenever possible. Now, when you've opened this second layer, put clamps on it, too. Yes, I... Dr. Kildare... Yes, Steve. Dr. Kildare, I... Stand by a minute, will you? All right. Nelson, what's the trouble? Captain, I can't do it. You're the only man aboard who could possibly do it. I'm sorry, sir. If he were hurt or something, I could give him first aid. But to cut a man open calmly and deliberately... Captain, I can't do it, and that's all. I can't order you to do it, Nelson. I know how you feel. I couldn't do it either. 
Make radio contact and we'll advise the Coast Guard in New York. that, Jimmy? Now what? You know, the only answer is to be there and board that freighter. There's no other way. Mm. Well, Jim, the Coast Guard's equipped with some pretty modern stuff, but we still don't have any guided missiles for rapid passenger service. No, but you do have a helicopter. Yeah, there's one out at the Long Island base. Ah, uh-uh. killed there. And a few months ago, you used it to drop a couple of firefighters on board a burning tanker off the Virginia coast. I remember reading about it. Ah, now wait, Jimmy. That was in broad daylight on a calm sea, and then those boys had been trained for it. Well, it doesn't sound very complicated to me to step off a rope ladder onto the deck of a ship. In the middle of the night, with that ship pitching and rolling 30 degrees? Uh-huh. It's a lot more complicated than you think. No, no, Jimmy. It's too risky even to think of. Now, look, Dr. Gillespie, don't make a production out of it. It's got to be done. So let's do it. Okay? Oh, okay. All right, Jim, I'll let the Palermo know and then call the base. I think Lieutenant Dane will be the best pilot for it. CGRB4 calling MS Palermo. Come in, Palermo. MS Palermo is standing by. Go ahead, New York. Captain Douglas, please. Captain's right here. Douglas speaking. Go ahead. We're going to try landing a doctor on board by helicopter. What's your present position? Over. Latitude 39, 31, 14 north. Longitude 68, 42, 25 west. Our course is 263 degrees, proceeding at five knots. Over. Roger. Weather conditions. Storm's clearing. The wind is down to force five and dropping. The swell's still bad. Visibility? Around 2,000 yards. After dark, though, you could probably see our searchlights for five or six miles. Over. All right, Captain Douglas. We'll line up this end first. Stand by, Palermo. Roger. Let's see now. If everything goes smoothly, I ought to be on board by 10 o'clock tonight, huh? Yeah. Then it'll take us about a half hour to... Kill there. What is it, Doctor? At my age, I can't go hopping out of helicopters onto moving ships. Yes, I know. Dr. Gillespie, I guess I'll just have to manage this one alone. Ah, by the great horns. But don't worry, though. I'll tell you all about it. Tell you everything I've done. After I've done it. Uh... Return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Well, Kildare, there she is. Oh? Where, Lieutenant? Straight ahead, a little starboard. Oh, yeah. It's a good thing they've got that searchlight, otherwise it'd be tough finding the Queen Mary out here tonight. The wind has died off some more. I'll drop down to 100 feet. They're swinging the light this way, Lieutenant. They must have seen us. Yeah. Boy, look at the size of those swells. This ain't gonna be easy, Doc. Well, you can't always find a turkey in your soup. Yeah. I'll be sitting up here in the cockpit, nice and cozy. You're the one that's gonna be dangling the end of that 50-foot rope ladder. You're so right. I guess I better crack the mic and let Frazier know we're over the ship. CG Airborne 21 to CGRB4. CG Airborne 21 to CGRB4. CG 
CRB-4 standing by. Go ahead, A-21. Bill, I'm hovering over the Palermo now, 100 feet up. Got the searchlight on us. The midship deck's all lit up. And some of the crew are out on it. I guess we're ready to have a go at it. Thought you'd like to know. Good. How's Kildare feel? Ask him. Bill, suppose I tell you how I feel in about 10 minutes. Right now, I'm numb. Yeah, I'd be too. Good luck. Thanks. Jimmy, can you hear me? Well, Dr. Gillespie, now why don't you go back to the hospital and get some sleep? Sleep? Now look, Jimmy, be sure you've got plenty of ether before you start the operation. And somebody there who knows how to use it. Elementary, my dear doctor. And another thing, Jimmy, be sure to check for any symptom of secondary... Sorry if that's against regulations, but this is just no time for backseat driving. Yeah, I know, Doc. I feel the same way every time the CO tries to tell me how to fly. Well, I'm holding steady at around 60 or 70 feet over the deck. I guess the time's come. Hey, you get out through that trap door right behind the seat there. All right. I'll put you as close to the deck as I can. Maybe right on it. Can't lay two on kind of this swell. Hang on to the ladder until the boys on deck say to let go. They can tell more about the role of the ship than you can. Got it? Right. Okay, kill that. Good luck. Thanks, Larry. So long. <laughs> Doctor, don't jump until we try to do. Right. Wait for the roll. Steady now. I'm okay, Captain. Close shave. Another foot and you'd been over the side. You wouldn't have had the devil's own chance of finding you. Uh, Captain, let's not worry about what might have happened. Where's the patient? CGRB4 calling MS Palermo. CGRB4 calling MS Palermo. Come in, Palermo. Uh, it looks like we're out of luck, Dr. Gillespie. I guess you're not going to answer. Confound the gut to answer. How do I know what Kildare is doing out there if they won't answer? That could be Dr. Kildare. Oh, Parker, shut up. Well. I don't see why you don't take Jimmy's advice and get some sleep. Lieutenant Dane said he landed okay, so from now on it's up to him. Mr. Frazier, you don't know Dr. Gillespie. He simply has to have his nose and everything. Parker, for the last time. I'm S. Palermo standing by for CGRB4. Go ahead, C.G. There they are. Palermo, we'd like to speak with Dr. Kildare if we could. Sorry, Dr. Kildare is still not available. Not available? Well, why isn't he available? I don't know, sir. Confound it. You tell him that Dr. Gillespie wants to talk to him immediately. I've given him all eight of your messages, sir. He said he'd answer them tomorrow. Tomorrow? By the great horn spoon... Would you care to send another message? Yes. Tell him to go to Blazes. To Blazes? Is that B as in Boston? L as in... Yes, L as in Lunkhead. And you go to Blazes, too. Yes, sir. Lermo, that's all. Stand by. Roger. Dr. Gillespie, I still think you ought to go to bed and forget about it until morning. I'll do no such thing. I'll report this to the FCC... The RFC, the Maritime Commission. I'll report it to Congress, young nincompoop. Well, I take it that you don't have a very high opinion of Kildare's ability, is that it? Ridiculous. He's the best doctor in the country. Next to me, of course. Then why don't you relax? I told you, Mr. Frazier, Dr. Gillespie's just a born snoop, and there's nothing anybody can do about it. Parker, so help me. When the helicopter gets back, I'm going to have him go out again and drop you. Oh, I'd love to help, Doctor. 100 miles from the nearest ship. That just about does it. How's his pulse, Captain Douglas? Still steady, Dr. Kildare. Good. Well, you can relax and clean up now, Steve. We're through. All right, sir. There we are. 
Nice job of hemstitching, Doctor. You'd have made a good sailmaker in the old days. Uh, not on a ship that rolls as much as this one. Yeah, it's the worst ground swell I've ever been in. At least in this part of the Atlantic. Mm. How about the boy here? Will he pull through? Yes, Captain. We got it in time. Barely in time, as a matter of fact. I'll stay with him until he comes out from under the anesthetic. What about all these messages from this Dr. Gillespie? Do you want me to contact the shore station now? Oh, I don't think there's any need to. I, and I don't know, though. I don't get an opportunity like this once in months. Sure. Let's go in the radio room and give him a call. All right, sir. Oh, Captain, if you don't mind watching him a few minutes, I'll be right back. Take your time, Doctor. I left the transmitter on, so it's already warmed up. Good. MS Palermo calling CGRB4, New York. MS Palermo calling CGRB4. Come in, RB4. Dr. Kildare, I'm sorry I had to back out of doing that operation. I just couldn't. Forget it, Steve. And then when you trusted me to take care... This is CGRB4, New York, standing by. Go ahead, Palermo. Dr. Kildare is calling Dr. Gillespie. Is he there? Am I here? Kildare, you listen to me. Why, Dr. Gillespie, I thought you'd be in bed hours ago. Never mind. Just tell me what happened. Happened? Oh, well, for one thing, I, I bruised my elbow when I landed on the deck. I, I'll let you take a look at it when I get back. I don't want to look at your confounded elbow. What about the operation? Oh, that. Well, it was quite a complicated case. Very interesting, in fact. Yeah, well, go on. Oh, much too complicated to go into tonight. Killed her. I'll tell you all about it when we reach port. Uh, day after tomorrow. I can't think it. Good night, Doctor. Okay, that's all, Steve. M.S. Palermo signing off. Good night. Kill <laughs> I'll bet he's pulling his hair out. <laughs> Confound it, Parker. Not only does he waste two days lolling around a ship, but now he has to be the last one down the gangplank. Oh, just relax, Dr. Gillespie. Relax. They brought the patient down here to the ambulance five minutes ago. So what's keeping Kildare? He knows what he's doing, and he'll be here in his own sweet time. I don't care if he never gets here. Parker, I'm through with him. Finally, absolutely, and for the last time, I'm through with him. Through with whom, Dr. Gillespie? Kildare, where did you come from? The other gangplank. Ah, you're looking very well, Doctor. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And so are you. Thank you. A pleasant voyage, I trust. Oh, yes, yes, very pleasant. Well, back to work. Yeah, what a pity. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess there isn't room for all of us to ride over in the ambulance, so why don't you go ahead, Dr. Gillespie? Parker and I'll get a taxi. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Well, what's wrong with that, Dr. Gillespie? Parker, you get in that ambulance and shut up. Don't say another word, you hear me? Well. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, we'll take the taxi. <laughs> Anything you say, Doctor. All right, Jimmy. I had it coming, and I've learned my lesson. Oh, now stop kidding me. You'll be butting in on my cases again within 24 hours, and you know it. Well, I, uh... <laughs> well, anyway, <laughs> this one turned out all right. Jimmy, we did it again. We did it again? Why, yes, I... You? Well, all right, confound it. You did it again. <laughs> you know something, Dr. Gillespie. I went out there alone, that's true enough. But I took something along with me. Huh? Yes. I took thousands of hours of experience from working with you, watching you, and learning from you. So you were right the first time. We did do it. Taxi? <laughs> In just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Oh, Jimmy, come on in. Oh, morning, Dr. Gillespie. 
Say, I was wondering if I could borrow Parker for about an hour. Oh, sure, why not? Is that all right with you, Parker? Oh, of course, Dr. Kildare. Special assignment of some kind, you mean? Oh, no, no, just routine. Couple of new patients in for diagnosis. Huh. Parker, we may as well go now if you're free. New patients, huh? What seems to be wrong with them? Oh, I think it's just... Just check up, nothing unusual. Uh, you know, Jimmy, it might be a good idea if I went along with you. Oh, well, thanks, Dr. Gillespie, but I might possibly notice something you wouldn't. I see. Uh, Parker, isn't that a roll of two-inch adhesive tape there on the table? Why, yes, it is. Tear off about 18 inches, will you? All right, Dr. Kildare. Dr. Gillespie, I think the time has come for a drastic lesson. Drastic lesson? What do you mean, Jimmy? You are, Dr. Kildare. Thanks, Parker. Now, just lean back in your chair, Doctor. I want to show you something. Show me something? That's right. Now, close your mouth a second. There. The... Right, Dr. Kildare. You've covered his mouth all over and taped his hands in the back of the chair. Don't worry. It'll do him good. Now, you sit there, Dr. Gillespie, and repeat 100 times mentally. Quote, I will not poke my nose into other people's cases. Unquote. We'll be back in about an hour. Come on, Parker. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Les Crutchfield and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Virginia Gregg, Raymond Burr, Herb Ellis, Jack Crucian, and Jack Webb. Dick Joy speaking.